apply consider distillation recycling of your waste solvents. It's about dollars saved. Here are some facts to consider. Cleanup generates the largest percentage of the hazardous waste in painting operations. In most operations, on average, a 55-gallon drum has less than 10% of actual paint waste. Even if it was double in paint waste, we would have 40 gallons of recyclable solvent in the drum. Why do we need solvent recyclers? To reduce the hazardous waste disposal, reduce solvent purchases, and reduce liability. Let's look further at reducing the hazardous waste. There are four points to consider. Environmentally sound practice, lower environmental exposure, a good corporate citizen, and ultimately reducing cost. When we look further at reducing solvent purchases, there are three points to consider. Reduce purchase time, avoid rising prices, and obviously reducing costs. And finally, let's look at reduced liability exposure. Here we have, we'll potentially lower the generator status. We'll have less waste, therefore less exposure. And ultimately again, reduction of cost. Let's take a quick look at the history of recycling. Originally it was dump it out back and let Mother Nature take care of it. In the last 25-30 years, there have been pickup services available for handling waste solvents. In more recent time, on-site recyclers have become a popular way of controlling each operation's own destiny. By looking at on-site recycling, there are various sizes to support the different waste generation levels. 3, 6, 17 and a half, and 55 gallon sizes are available from Becca. How do recyclers work? Based on taking the contaminated waste solvent heating it up to a boiling point, creating a vapor, carrying that vapor across an air-cooled or water-cooled condenser, and then capturing it in some sort of receiving tank. The contaminated solids are then left behind and captured in some sort of nylon bag type system for easy removal. As we look further on how they work, we'll look at two areas. One, how do you dial in the process at setup to make sure it operates properly? And then how do you deal with day-to-day -day operations? When we talk about dialing in the process, there are several things to consider. The amount of solid waste material, the type of materials, both solvent and solids, the time available, and the temperature. Once all these are considered, the still bottoms will have a range from a slurry to a soft marshmallow all the way to a solid puck. When we look at the day-to-day -day operation, it's a very simple process. Load the unit, push a button to start the operation, remove the recycle bag waste material once the op cycle is complete, install a new recycler bag, pour in the new waste material, and then start the next cycle. Some things to look at when you're considering how they work is early designs versus today. Early distillation recyclers were considered dangerous. They had a high odor level to them. The solvent would weaken over time. They would break down all the time, and they became a hassle for operators. When we consider whether they're dangerous or not, we have to look at early designs versus today's designs. Early designs had small relief valves, metal-to-metal -metal sealing contact, improper controls, and inconsistent control, where today's designs have to follow a process listing it to UL228 standard. This is assuring better space-age polymer sealing designs, intrinsically safe type of controls, and better control and safety of the unit. When we look at whether they stink or not, early designs did have metal-to-metal -metal seal contact, which allowed for vapor loss and odors. Where today's designs are space-age type polymer seals, and today where there's better training 
associated with solvent distillation recyclers. One of the claims is that solvent weakens. What we have learned over time is that the main thing is loss of certain solvents. Acetone is one of the more typical ones because of its low boiling point. Once you lost that solvent, you then lose the overall characteristics of the combination of solvents. This can be achieved by adding acetone to the batch as processes are completed. Another thing to consider is water in the solvent. Water can also dilute and cause the solvent to not be as strong. This can be handled by proper practices of making sure water is not coming in contact with your solvent. When we look at recyclers breaking down, obviously early designs did not have the current UL listed standard that we have today, but you got to remember all operations, componentry, etc. should be considered when looking at and reviewing a unit. Do they have a listed system? Do they have the ability to train and certify operators? And do they have service centers that can take care of your system? Hassle for operators. Take a look at today's designs. They should be easy one-touch controls. They should be tested and listed to UL2208. And there should be adjustment capability to dial in your particular process. And if we haven't stressed it enough, we'll stress it here. It should be listed to UL2208. UL-2208 was first released in September of 1996. It covers all distillation solvent units. It covers all units up to 60 gallons. The units must be installed for NFPA 70, 30, 33, 34, NFPA 1, and the International Fire Code. All codes specify a solvent distillation unit recycler must be listed to UL-2208 or approved by the authority having jurisdiction. What national codes affect the type of equipment and installation at locations? Two considerations, National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, and the other is the International Code Council or the International Fire Code. In all cases in the National Fire Codes, this diagram best shows the classification zones that must be considered when looking at a solvent distillation recycler. In each of the codes, you will find verbiage that identifies that solvent distillation units shall be approved or shall be listed in accordance with UL-2208, the standard for solvent distillation units. From a summary standpoint, three bullet points to be considered. Solvent recyclers must be located in electrical areas per the code. Review the diagram. Solvent recyclers must be approved or listed for UL-2208 and Class 1 Division 1. And finally, insurance underwriters are very interested that properly listed equipment is utilized. What environmental requirements affect the handling of still bottoms from the recycler? All still bottoms are considered hazardous waste until proven different. They must pass TLCP test, dryness test, and flammability test. The process should be approved in writing from the local EPA, and we would recommend approved from the disposal landfill that you're planning on utilizing. Don't forget, you're responsible for cradle to grave of the hazardous waste. Let's take a look at an example of recycling. In this example, Pre-coat metals utilized a recycler system. When reviewing, they had several options. Option one was basically just to dispose of the hazardous waste. In this case, an example in 2005, they had 65,000 gallons of solvent disposed of at a cost of 231,000. In today's dollars, that would be considerably higher with the cost of solvents today. It left them with high exposure, increased liability, and obviously increased costs in both disposal and purchases. They could have an off-site recycler pick up their waste solvent. This would be a turnkey type system 
with a fixed price per gallon. Still left some potential liability because of cradle to grave responsibility. In 2005, they shipped 41,631 gallons and reclaimed 21,000 gallons, a 51% yield. The total cost $127,000. The final option was looking at on-site recycling. With minimum operating requirements, short process times, and efficiency at 70%, plus finally they can continue to recycle the material after it's been recycled from before. When reviewing all three systems, a significant cost savings is available by having on-site recycling. For operations that are looking at on-site recycling, there are ROI analysis that are available for evaluation. The kind of information necessary is operational weeks per year, solvent purchases per week, cost of solvent per gallon, and cost of disposal per gallon. Also need to identify which volume of recycler is required based on the volume of waste generated. Once the inputs are provided, a straight purchase calculation can be made. It would provide an ROI in years and an overall estimated saving. If lease was considered, the system would also do lease calculations, looking at lease payments and the estimated savings after those payments. One of the unique things that can be offered is free waste testing. Becca offers this process. You send in your waste material, a sample representative of your waste material, and Becca will process the material in their systems and provide back to you the resulting clean solvent and the waste residues. Therefore, you can see exactly what you would expect out of a Becca system. Some factors you should consider when selecting a particular supplier. Are they easy to do business with? Are there units listed to UL 2208 and for Class 1 Division 1 requirements? This will assure your ability to handle local jurisdiction and insurance writers acceptance. Knowledge resource expertise provides an ROI system. Reliability assured by references and testing. Does a system have ease of operator use? And finally, do they offer services, annual tune-ups to assure performance, and do they have service centers and parts availability? In conclusion, why consider recycling? Three main points. Reduce hazardous waste disposal, reduce solvent purchases, and reduce liability.